So you got a new laser just like me and you're ready for your first project. I am going to be doing a box for my first project because they seem to be very common, very useful and easy to do. I'm going to go through how to design this box in Lightburn or at least how to get the plans in the Lightburn, where to generate the plans from, and then of course cutting it out on the laser itself. So with that, let's get going. Step one on making your first box is going to be design. And to get a design of a box, we're going to go to makercase.com. Now there are a couple options here to make a box. However, we're just gonna go with the basic box here, but you can get more advanced with the polygon box and some other uh, bending options and things like that. So on our basic box here, we have some parameters. We have width, height, and depth. And as you change these, you'll see the image on the right change. So we're gonna make our depth three inches, we're gonna make our height two inches, and we're gonna make our width 13 inches. Now, you notice that this box is just some straight edges, that these edges don't interlock with each other. So to change that, we're gonna come over here to the bottom, and we're gonna go with a finger design so that these box sides interact with each other. And we're also gonna go with these dimensions being at the inside dimensions of the box, since the knife that we'll be putting in this box is around 12 and one quarters of an inch. And we wanna have a little bit of wiggle on both sides. Now you can also change the size of the fingers. Uh, I like leaving this where it was, just these nice long big fingers that are, uh, I guess, evenly spaced along the edge of the box. We're gonna be going with a closed box design. So this box has a top. If you choose open, it basically just doesn't give you a, uh, a top and it also keeps the finger cuts out of, or the grooves out of the top edge of the box. But we wanna put a top on this box, so we're gonna leave that there. Now you can give it your material thickness. This is a necessity, otherwise your slots will be cut too deep or too shallow. We're gonna be using 1 8 of an inch uh, birch for this box. So once you get it all the way to where you like it, all you have to do is hit the download box plans button and it will give you uh, this file above and it kind of gives you a preview here on, on the image above. You hit download SVG file or DXF. Both of these files will work inside of most laser cutting programs. And we're gonna be using uh, Lightburn today, so it will definitely work. So all you do here is hit download DXF file. It gives you a prompt of where you wanna put it. I wanna put it in this DBox folder here. So now that we've done that, we have the DXF file in our folder. We can close out our web page here and open up Lightburn. Okay, so we have a blank Lightburn template. We'll come over to our file and just drag it into Lightburn. All right, so now we have our top and bottom. We have the back and the front and the right and the left of our box. So I don't have a large enough workspace in my D1 Pro to uh, cut out all of these at the same time. So we are going to be cutting them out in batches. So I'm just gonna move all this over. And actually I'm probably gonna rotate this 90 degrees here. So everything is going nice and long ways. And I'm gonna to try to organize these long ones together. Okay. So the piece of board that we're gonna be working with is a 12 by 18 board. So I'm just gonna draw a 12 by 18 square. So it's 12 wide, 12 inches wide and 18 inches, we'll unlock this, 18 inches tall. Okay, before we cut this guy out, we're gonna put some customization on these boards. So I'm gonna delete these words the top and the bottom pieces are identical and the front and the back pieces are identical. So it really doesn't matter which one we do this on. We're gonna add the logo for the gentleman who will be receiving this box onto the top of the box. And his logo is right here in a PNG file. This will also work with a JPEG. So I'm just gonna drag that on over here. So with this image selected, we're going to right click on it and go to trace image. And what this will do is it will create a nice path around the image for the machine to etch. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. You can see here that that path uh, is a double lined path. And then I think we're gonna select a new layer for this image and go with fill. Let's make this a little smaller. 
bring it over here just for fun and right click and go to preview. Okay, that looks pretty good. So it fills in the, uh, the space here in between the lines. We could also go with line. Let's see what that would look like. If I hit line and then go to preview. Okay, so this doesn't fill the space and it would just, uh, it would just laser engrave the line. So that would take two minutes and 58 seconds and then fill. It'll take 21 minutes to fill that. So we're gonna go with the line and see how that looks. All right, so we want this to be on one of these tops and we want it to be at 90 degrees. So we're just gonna go ahead and rotate this guy 90 degrees. And we're gonna bring down the size until it looks like it fits. All right, so I drew a line from the edge of this box. So this one measures 165 and this one measures 165. So these, these are uh, the same length. So this edge of this box is the center or at least verified to be the center. So I'll turn off my measuring tool. I'll select these two items. Or actually, I'll leave the box where it is for now. Uh, I'll select the line, I'll delete that line, I'll delete this line, and I'll delete this line. So this edge, this top left edge, is the center of the box. So I'll move my image on there and reduce the size here. Let's see. So I can at least get it lined up. Looks like I may have to still eyeball this guy a little bit to, to get it where we want it. But here, I'm just going to line it up with that edge and I can delete this box and then I can move this with the X position up here so I feel like it's in the middle, which I feel like that is probably pretty good right there. I'll go up one. Okay, now that we got this logo nice and centered on the box, we're going to go ahead and add some text. Our text is going to be the gentleman's initials on the side of the box. So I'm going to go to the text tool. I'm going to select here and his initials are J M H. Okay. All right. So this text is no good. We're going to fix that. All right. This is the one I decided to go with. We're going to fill this text. So we'll, we'll do the layers in a second, but before we do, let's put that on the edge of the box here. I think we should put this on the side. All right, so there's our custom box. Uh, we can delete the right and the left. Okay, so since these won't be on the first print, I'm gonna put these on a tool layer, it's T1, so they will not be uh, cut on the first cut job. And then I want this emblem on its own line cut, so that's gonna be layer one, so that's fine. We'll leave that set up as layer one. We're going to select the text here, and we're gonna put that on layer two, and we're gonna fill it. And then the box itself will all be on layer zero and that's going to be a line cut. Alrighty, so here we are in my shop. I have this laptop plugged directly into the laser cutting slash engraving machine. I made a few extra changes to my layers over here. I'm going to go with a slightly lower power setting on the line. I just looked at this engraving and figured that these lines are pretty close to each other and a high power setting would probably make a a pretty burnt image. So I'm going to go with the 45 there, 45% 45 at 150 speed. Also, I'm going to do the same thing with the fill on layer number two. And then layer zero zero is our cut layer and it's going to cut out the outline here. So this is going to be uh, what we're working on on this project. The first step with the laser is to set the height of the laser for the material that we're cutting. And I have this set at the right height right now, but if it wasn't, what you would do is you'd loosen a set screw on the left side of the module, and then you can raise this guy up and down until this little arm contacts what you're working on. And then you can pull it up like this and you're perfectly, uh, perfectly spaced out from the item that you're gonna be cutting. One thing to note is that there are a couple extra tick marks on the right side. If you're cutting something super thick, you can adjust the thumb screw on the right side and actually get a little bit uh, better cutting on the material. So if you're cutting through maybe a quarter inch plywood, I would go ahead and adjust that on the right hand side of the module. But for this, this is just an eighth of an inch piece of wood. So we're just going to leave it where it's at. OK, so the next thing we need to do is figure out the position of the laser so that we can get a nice and accurate cut on our piece of wood. 
To do that, I'm going to be using absolute coordinates, which means that this image in Lightburn is going to be to scale with where the laser is going to be positionally. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit this home button. And what that just did is that moved the laser to the top left of the uh, image here in Lightburn, which corresponds to the top left of my workbench. So now we have a zero zero origin on our project. I know that on my laser machine, it will only start cutting about 20 millimeters from the edge of my workspace here and about 10 millimeters down. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the laser uh, with the program to that position so that I can have a good starting spot to move my wood around. So I'm gonna go to the move tab and I'm gonna change this to millimeters. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just go to 30, 30 or maybe 25, 15. And then I'm gonna go. So that looks like a pretty good spot. We're gonna move this piece of wood close to where it needs to be. And then we're gonna frame our image. Okay, so let's frame this guy, and this will show the outer uh, area of where we're gonna cut. Now, make sure I have a tooling layer on here that is the actual size of the wood. I'm gonna turn the frame option off on that so that it does not frame the tooling layer, and it only frames the layers that we're going to cut. So this looks pretty good so far. Okay, so that's a problem. Okay, so you saw that my framing laser beam came off of the item. So the thing I like to do here is just move the item around and keep framing until it's right. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, now we're in good shape to start the cut slash engrave. So I also changed up the order of these layers. So I wanted to engrave the emblem first, then engrave the initials, and finally cut the line around everything. And that's just because when you're cutting, things can move around after they're cut out. And I, I don't want it to be uh, trying to engrave a piece that has already been uh, kind of shifted a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, press the start button, put the glasses on, so you don't damage your eyes and, and get this guy going. All right, so the top, bottom, and sides look like they all cut out. So let's take this board out of here. Very nice. Look at that. So we have our pieces. So the only pieces we have left to do are going to be the, uh, so uh, the front and the back. But just as a mock-up here, you can see uh, these pieces fit together fairly well. Very nice. Let's see. Little finagling. Yeah, they seem like they fit pretty good. So we're gonna do the top and the bottom, or the, the front and the back, or the ends, I guess. Let's call them the ends. We're gonna do the ends. To do that, I think we have enough room on our original board here. I think we have enough room with what's left over. So I'm gonna cut this and then uh, get this board in here and, and do the ends. All right, so I let the glue dry overnight and this thing seems like it's uh, held together pretty darn well here. I note that the 
glue dried clear. It went on white, dried clear, so that's kind of nice. Uh, it's not as uh, visually obtrusive. But yeah, the, uh, the box is held together pretty good here. So we're gonna put the top on. One thing to note is since I used the clamps on the side, you can see that this long box, there's a little bit of flex in the sides and it's actually gonna be really tight with the top, which uh, kind of works out to the advantage, I think, for the box. It, it holds the top on. I was planning on using a piece of twine or something to hold the top on, which we'll probably still do, but uh, in this scenario, it's kind of nice to have the top held on uh, just with friction. So to get it on the top, uh, I've messed around with this a little off camera. I put in one side like this, so when I get this side in, I can take my fingernail and kind of pull on the outside of the box a little bit. There we go. And kind of work my way down. Okay, just like that. Now we got the box on, the top on there. Yeah, pretty solid little box. I think, uh, I think the end user or, or the guy receiving the knife is gonna like this. And uh, my friend who made the knife, I think he's gonna like it as well since it's a nice presentation for his uh, for his craftsmanship. So that's how you make a box or your first box. It's a pretty simple process. You know, you get the plans for free online, open source. You put it in Lightburn, you cut it out, you put the box together and glue it up. So if y'all got something out of this video, please hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel. This is Redbeard Engineered, signing off.